Whitney Museum of Art, Jeff Koons retrospective, biggest thing they've ever done. They filled the entire museum Most with. Most expensive show ever at the Whitney. And they filled it with what? Well, this is stainless steel cast hot air. These, at their best, are pieces that managed to encapsulate, I'll give you this, the moment that we're living in. A moment full of lots of money, lots of luxury, and tons of hot air. Let's get back to this thing. Most expensive work ever sold by a living artist. Yes. That's the story, right? $58.4 million. I don't care that idiot billionaires are buying these things for all the wrong reasons. I somehow don't care that this is participating in the world of the 1%. And that, for me, is deeply weird. And for him to have that effect on me interests me. I'm work sorry. like this either has content or it doesn't. And I think part of the argument here is that he decided against it. It was much easier for him to sort of discard this stuff and essentially make baubles for, again, the period that we're living in. And these are perfect examples of that. They're perfect examples of that great, shiny, almost Rococo vapidity. The most recent monumental work by Jeff Koons. One, one curiously without a reflection. Pile of play Oh, Play-Doh. <laughs> play <-Doh. laughs> See, I'm getting, I'm channeling your views here. Exactly. It's an impressive object. You can't deny that it's an impressive object. And of course, it encapsulates the most basic notion of art making, right? A pile of stuff that kids turn into whatever they want and that looks like crap. The content, if, they, if it exists, couldn't be more facile. <laughs> the important categories in judging this work are either its stated emptiness or the, the content that everybody else seems to fill it with, which is money. So make up your mind, it's either one or the other. Everything everyone says about him is wrong. I think he profoundly misreads all the codes of the culture so that the normal kind of thing, ways you'd have of interpreting an artist fall apart with him. I think he's properly fucked up in the way great artists are. I, 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 I find it kind of incredible that you would basically sort of come up with that. I think one of the foundational things about Coons is that he basically takes judgment straight out of the art and as critics, as a critic myself, as a critic personally, I find that tremendously problematic. There is no judgment in any of these works by design. This is about confusing categories. This is porn presented as love. And to do it as seamlessly as he's doing it, I think is genuinely interesting. It's love. And it is. That's what's important about these, is that these are genuinely romantic pictures. So imagine someone who can't tell the difference between porn and romance. Someone who can't tell the difference between a beautiful romantic image of love and uh, something that's uh, masturbatory aid. That's a pretty interesting misunderstanding, it seems to me. The notion that that ball is just literally in equilibrium, which is in theory what it is, that's actually genuinely weird. I totally agree with you. I, I, I think besides the fact that this piece is the, is the work that launched a thousand formaldehyde sharks cows. Uh, it, it, it's actually, you know, quite a piece of eye candy. My problem with, with Coons is where he, it's eye candy without content, and I think this has something to it. It is normal art, in a sense, right? It answers all the normal, it, it's scary, it's a little bit scary, it's a little bit attractive. I, I just think it's good art as opposed to the other stuff, it's just bad. Yeah, but once you can fit into the category good art, it means it's not moving things ahead that much. The great thing about radical works of art has always been that they reject the very category of I, art. I take your point. This is, idea is not original with me, it's again Scott Rothkopf, the curator, who points out how completely messed up it is to imagine this object in a millionaire's tasteful living room, right? Mies van der Rohe sofa, right? A Breuer table, and Michael and Bubbles, right? It really is an amazing act of pollution. And if he can pollute that world, oh, oh, then I'm, I'm impressed. I, I want to see ugly, hideous kitsch. Oh. Just the, in, in those contexts. They already have ugly, hideous <laughs> kids in their places. You know? Okay, you win. I'm, Please. I, you know, this say? is just the ugly, hideous kitsch of the positional variety. It's perfect. You know? It's much better than a Mies van der Rohe settee, you know, and much better than a Maserati in the driveway. This basically sort of like kills it. Yeah.